Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So before we get started on today's video, I just want to do a quick shout out to my cousin June. He's the creator of Dude It's June. I'll link his channel in the description box down below. His positive attitude and his sunny personality will definitely rub off on you guys, so you should totally check him out if you want some sunshine in your life. But shout out to you June, and thank you so much for sharing your YouTube knowledge with me. Really, neighbor? <sighs> He's gonna mow his lawn right now. Come on, Larry! But okay, on today's video, I'm gonna be doing a little about me and give you a little rundown on my life and Troy's and also our infertility story. So if you're interested in that, keep on watching. So hi you guys, my name is Lexi. I'm 26 years old. I have a wonderful husband named Troy who's 25 years old. We've been married for five years. We currently have no children, hence the infertility story. Um, we have one fur baby. Her name is Kalia. She's six years old. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Troy's from the Micronesian Islands, specifically Puan Pei, Micronesia. I am half American, half Micronesian, and Troy is a full-blooded Micronesian. Troy and my father are actually from the same island, so I guess you'd say our ethnicity is Pacific Islander. So that's just a quick little rundown on us. If you have more questions, put them in the comment box below. A little bit about our infertility story. Um, Trey and I got married in June of 2013 and we didn't really want to rush into babies right away. We just kind of wanted to enjoy our time together, um, kind of go through the ups and downs of married life and figuring all that stuff out. Um, the one thing that we knew for sure is that we wanted to have a house before we started trying. Shortly after getting married in June, Troy had actually moved north up here in Minnesota, which is where we currently reside right now, um, before I moved up. He moved up before I moved up because I had some time off for my sister's wedding that was going to be in August, and I knew if I moved up to Minnesota and started a new job then, there wasn't a guarantee that I would have that time off for her wedding. So when we moved up to Minnesota, we had lived with my parents for a while while we saved for a house. And we actually started trying before we had bought our house. Um, we knew that the house was coming, it was coming into play. I just always knew that I was going to have some trouble with my fertility. Um, I had always asked my OBGYN if it was a problem, the fact that I didn't have regular cycles. And she said it would be no problem at all. Lies. Lies, lies, lies. So we actually started trying in September of 2016. We went almost about a full year um, with trying and no success. So in August of 2017, I had set up our appointment with a fertility clinic. I went straight to the fertility clinic. I didn't even waste my time with my OBGYN. Um, I never had a regular periods and I just assumed that that was probably had to do with a little bit of my ovulation as well. Um, I know that when you go to OBGYN, they try to start you on Clomid and medications like that. And I had already started doing my research and going on YouTube and looking at people going through infertility. And a lot of people say that Clomid can really like mess with your system, your emotions, your everything. And I didn't feel the need to have to like go through that stuff if it wasn't even gonna work for me. So I went right to the fertility clinic and um, I remember the date exactly. We had our first appointment with them on August 11th of 2017. I only remember this because we had the appointment, we went to it and then straight from the appointment we got on the highway and we were traveling down south to Missouri for a family softball tournament. So that, that date stands pretty vivid in my mind. Not only that, but August 11th, of 2011 is when Trey and I started dating so it's in my head so we went there and we just did the whole rundown we did um, blood work Trey did his semen analysis we did a um, I don't know what it's called but they basically took like a little piece of my uterus to test that out I don't remember all of this process back then as vividly I wish that I had started vlogging our journey when we first started all of this, but I didn't. So then though, a week after that, we went back into the clinic and we got the whole rundown on everything that was going on. 
Um, we got Troy's work back and his is fine. His mobility is good. His numbers are good. Everything was good. So obviously that leads to me and I'm the issue. Um, we had diagnosed at that time that I am PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, which I always, like, when I explain it to my family, I explain it as it's kind of like a type of diabetes, at least is how I perceive this um, diagnosis. I don't process sugars the way that I'm supposed to, so the way that I balance that out is I take metformin. I take a 500 milligram dosage three times a day, so basically 1500 milligrams altogether every day, um, and that helps balance out my sugars. Um, I lost a little bit of weight going on it, but not a ton. It just kind of helps me balance my sugars. So at that appointment, we determined that I need to do an HSG test. HSG? HCG? I forget. Um, but basically what it is is they go in and inject dye into my uterus and into my fallopian tubes and see if my tubes are blocked or not. Um, and after we did that test, which was not fun at all, it actually was worse than when they scraped the sample from my uterus. The, the catheter kept coming out and we had to try it three times and it hurt and I was cramping and it was just like not the greatest experience. But um, I soldiered through. With that appointment, we determined that my left fallopian tube was blocked and I had two choices at that point. I can either do exploratory surgery first and see if we can flush my tubes out and clear them out and I can start to conceive naturally or I can go straight to IVF. So I am blessed with the fact that my company that I work for actually pays for um, fertility treatments. I know a lot of companies don't do that so I know that I'm blessed for that but it's expensive and I can either spend the allotted money that my insurance gives me to do exploratory surgery and then we can figure out that it doesn't work and then I have to pay out of pocket to do IVF or I can just go right to IVF and that's where I'll spend my money, which is exactly what we chose to do. We chose to just go straight to IVF. Um, I never ever ever ovulated, I never really had periods, so I knew that even if I cleared out my tubes, we'd probably still have a problem and to this day I still feel like that was the right choice. Do I wish that I could just go and conceive naturally? I really really do but I don't think that spending that money and doing that procedure would have helped. So we went right back into my doctor's office and talked about IVF um, and she told us that she could get us pregnant as soon as November of 2017. We are now sitting in October of 2018 with no baby in our arms, um, but that is with no fault of anybody, just the way the world is working. So I really could have gotten pregnant as soon as November, but there was still a lot of things that I still had to get figured out. Um, I needed to work on my weight because in order to do the egg retrieval surgery, I needed to be at a specific weight to do so. Um, and I was not there so they gave me a few months to lose the weight because they didn't want to restrict me to a certain time because if I stress myself out I can throw all these other things out of balance so I was given a few months to do that um, I also had a problem with my vitamin D I live in Minnesota so there's not much Sun here even in the summer I don't feel like it ever gets like as hot as it did when we lived in Iowa or when we go and visit Missouri and stuff like that. It's just not as hot. So I actually had to take a 50,000 milligram dose for vitamin D in order to get my levels to be where they're supposed to be. So that tells you a lot. Um, I actually still continue to take vitamin D to this day. So we actually didn't start the egg retrieval process until the middle of January is when we started taking all the medications. I wish I had memory of everything that I went through with that. The only thing that I really do remember is when we were stimming, which was when we were taking the shots of Menopir and Gonal F. I think they say you typically stim between 10 to 14 days and I I think I stimmed between 16 or 18 days. So it was a long process and I remember just like getting towards the end and just feeling like I'm so, so done with this. I'm so over it. I just like, oh, I couldn't do it anymore. So my tentative egg retrieval um, surgery date was actually scheduled for the 13th of February of this year, but we actually ended up not doing it until I believe it was like the 19th or the 20th. 
um, just because I had to stim for so long. So the day of egg retrieval day was a little nerve-wracking. This was actually the first time I had ever had surgery. I've never ever had surgery minus the time when I had to be put out for getting a tooth removed when I was younger. But otherwise this was like my first time like being put under and like having to go into like an OR and like all that stuff. So it was a little bit nerve-wracking but I was also excited for all the possibilities that were to come. So we went there and it was, it was quick. I felt like I was counting backwards and then the next minute I was like waking up in the recovery room and it was just the quickest thing ever. Right when we got out, um, they were able to tell us that they got 22 eggs, but then it was the waiting game, waiting to see how many were mature, waiting to see how many were fertilized and how many embryos we would end up with. So I think we had to wait I want to say it was another day or two before we could figure out how many eggs were actually mature. Um, so we got that call and 19 out of the 22 eggs were actually mature. So that was exciting. We felt like we were going to have a lot of possibilities. Um, so then they said that they would call me in two more days and let me know how many um, were actually fertilizing. So we waited for two more days and they called and they said that out of the 19 that were mature, 14 of them had actually fertilized. So I was like really excited about that and then the doctor said to me, but out of the 14, we really only expect like one or two embryos to come out of it. And I remember looking at Troy and saying, one or two? Like we just went from 22 eggs to only two possible embryos. Like that was a little devastating, but then I thought to myself, then we have two kids or we do another egg retrieval or we'll figure it out. Um, so that was a little disheartening, I guess, to say the least. But then we had to wait a few more days in order for them to call and let us know the final number of embryos that we'll have. So we finally got that call and out of the 14 eggs that had fertilized, we ended up with six embryos, which again, to go from 14 to six was a little disappointing but it was better than the one or two that they expected. And also, if you really think about it, if all six are to work, I have six children, which is a lot. <laughs> I mean, I would love to have six children, but um, like when you think of it as like some might work and some might not, it just makes you a little bit nervous. So that's kind of how I was feeling. But I just was trying to think positive and all six will work for me and I'll have six children and we'll be good. So sometimes what happens after egg retrieval, what you're able to do is five days later, um, you're able to go into a fresh transfer um, where they, they won't even freeze any of the embryos and they'll take one or two or all six, whatever you're deciding, and they'll transfer them back into your body in the hopes that you'll have a baby. But my lining um, wasn't looking up to par. Also, after my egg retrieval, I had a mild case of OHSS, which is ovarian hyperstimulated syndrome. And basically it just means your, when you do egg retrieval, the Menopure and the Gonwell F that you're taking, it's making your ovaries go from almond size to orange size in a really short amount of time. So when they take the eggs from you at egg retrieval time, your ovaries like are trying to go back to the normal size sometimes it, you just retain water and your ovaries don't go down as nicely as they should so it was a lot of cramping and my stomach hurt and I just didn't feel good I really for egg retrieval I took the day of egg retrieval off and then the day after and then I was supposed to go back to work the day after that and um, I ended up being out for the whole entire week because it was like probably one of the worst pains I've ever been in. But because my uterine lining wasn't up to the way that it was supposed to be, um, they want it thick but not too thick, um, we ended up going with a frozen transfer. So we ended up freezing all six embryos and waiting until the end of May to actually do the transfer. So about April 12th is when I first started taking my birth control, which I know, odd, why would you take birth control if you're trying to get pregnant? But it's just because they're trying to put you on a calendar, so it's like they just want to have you on a system, on a chart. So I started my birth control April 12th, and um, 
Then I went to Lupron shots, which I was actually able to do myself because they're in my stomach. And then after Lupron shots, you move on to Vival estrogen patches. At least Vival is the brand that my doctor had me use. And they kind of slowly increase you. You start at one and then do one for a couple days, then go to two, three, and then you do four all the way up until transfer and then up until your pregnancy test. And if you're pregnant, then you keep wearing the patches for six more weeks. And then in the middle of also doing the patches, you move on to also doing endometrium inserts, which is like a progesterone insert, really messy. That's all I'll say about it. And then also doing progesterone shots, which actually are injected in your lower back. But Troy actually has to do those for me. So for that time period, I was waking him up. My work schedule, I work from 5.30 in the morning till 2, and Troy works from 7 to 4. So he obviously wakes up a little bit later than I do, but I was waking him up about 4.45 every day. Um, to do my shots so he'd do my shot and then go back to bed so that was kind of an exhausting time period for him I did it for about a month and a half and then our transfer date was scheduled for May 30th so we did the transfer date we were really excited I you have to go in with a full bladder so that was probably the only uncomfortable thing of the whole process because you have to have a full bl full bladder because the bladder um, actually lifts the, the uterus so they're able to like get in there easier and also see it with the ultrasound so that was probably the worst part of everything but we did a transfer and it was so exciting you could see the little bubbles when they inject it because they do um, an ultrasound at the same time so you can see it up on the screen after that it was the waiting game so because we did the transfer on May 30th we actually weren't gonna know our test results until June 8th which was hard for us because on that day was actually my cousin's graduation party. So we found out that we were pregnant. We were really excited and really hopeful. Uh, we went to my cousin's graduation party and we had to like be quiet. And all we wanted to do was like shout it from the rooftops and tell everybody. We've known a couple of people who went through miscarriage and they had gave us the advice about like, don't tell anyone, just keep it to yourself until you know you're in the clear. We were able to see the heartbeat at our six week ultrasound. Um, we couldn't hear it yet, but we could see it. And um, that was really exciting for us. But then we went back for our eight week ultrasound and there was no more heartbeat. So um, we ended up miscarrying at about eight weeks, five days. And that was a little bit hard for us. Um, I'm gonna do a whole other video of our miscarriage um, just because I feel like if I did an about me, our infertility story, and our miscarriage story, this video would be forever. But that's a little bit of our infertility story. We um, had a successful egg retrieval with six embryos. We had a successful transfer that came out with a pregnancy, but it just it didn't stick, so we ended up miscarrying. That's all I have for today. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. There is more to come and hopefully a rainbow baby to come out of it. Leave any comments and questions down below. If you have any, please click that red subscribe button and that notification bell because you don't want to miss what's coming next. We have our transfer date coming up, more medications to come, but it's coming up really, really 